Hello, and thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll be covering calibrating the current sensor and use of related OSD elements. Why do I need to calibrate the current sensor? Having a properly calibrated current and voltage sensor is vital for a long-range FPV drone. The sensor readings will affect multiple important OSD elements which are available to assist you. The voltage sensor. Fortunately, quite often, the voltage sensor will be close to properly calibrated with the default scale used in Betaflight. Calibration follows the same procedure as will be explained for the current sensor. If the calibration is too far off, it can affect firmware functions such as low voltage warnings or auto-selecting profiles based on battery voltage at plug-in. The current sensor. The current sensor will also often be close to properly calibrated with the default scale of 100 used in Betaflight, although 200 is also commonly used. Usually a bit of fine tuning is still required. If the calibration is too far off, it can affect firmware functions such as the milliamp hour count in your OSD or battery capacity warnings and estimated flight time remaining. Having both of these calibrated correctly is very important for a long range drone. These two sensors along with flight time are your only way of knowing if it's time to turn back or if you can push a bit further and make it to that mountain peak. Some Betaflight OSD elements use the current sensor's readings, such as milliamp hour used, amperage, estimated efficiency, and estimated flight time remaining. Milliamp hour used. The current sensor readings help to estimate how much of the battery's capacity has been used. It is displayed as milliamp hour. Amperage. The current sensor is used to calculate how much current, or amps, the drone's motors and electronics are pulling from the battery. It is important to make sure that this reading does not exceed the recommended maximum for your battery, especially if using lithium-ion cells. Estimated efficiency. If using a GPS, Betaflight will be able to estimate the average amount of milliamp hours it requires to fly one kilometer. For example, if it reads 250 milliamp hours per kilometer and you have a 1500 milliamp hour battery, 1500 divided by 250 equals six. You should be able to reach a total range of roughly six kilometers. Estimated flight time remaining. Betaflight will estimate the remaining flight time for your craft based on milliamp hour consumption and the battery capacity entered on the power and battery tab. So it is important that you enter the correct number for capacity. If the milliamp hour used count at the end of your flight is 3700 and you used a 4000 milliamp hour battery, you want to enter 3700 for the capacity, not 4000. The calibration procedure. Current sensor calibration. Follow this simple process two or three times and the current sensor scale should be fairly close to correct. With a fully charged battery, Fly the drone and record the milliamp hour used. Charge the battery and record the milliamp hour charged. Now divide the first number by the second. Then multiply the answer by the current sensor scale used in Betaflight. I'll show you an example. I did a short flight and used 510 milliamp hours. I then charged the battery back to full and the charger read that had an input 275 milliamp hours into the battery. So the first number divided by the second, 510 divided by 275 equals 1.85. For that flight, the current sensor scale was set to 65. So now we multiply the answer by the scale number. So 1.85 times 65 equals 120.25. We'll round that to 120. The new current sensor scale should be set to 120. 
Now the procedure is repeated two more times, then the scale should be fairly close to correct. You don't need to fly a whole battery each time, but the longer you fly, the closer the calculation will get you to where it should be. It will never be perfect, but you should be able to get it consistently close. I sometimes use a 6S2P lithium ion pack with a total capacity rating of 5200 milliamp hours. The average capacity charged after flying until reaching 2.5 volts is about 4900 milliamp hours. Each time I drain the battery down to 2.5 volts, the milliamp hour used almost always reads within 100 milliamp hours of the expected 4900 milliamp hour. I would consider this to be well calibrated. After everything is calibrated, the total milliamp hour that is reached is still a bit of a variable. This could cause your craft to run out of battery before reaching the expected milliamp hour reading. But you can learn what the difference will likely be and take that into account. The higher the amp draw, the less milliamp hour total a battery will provide. For instance, the Sony VTC6 lithium ion cell has a rated capacity of 3000 milliamp hour. Expected milliamp hour total at constant discharge current, as stated in the Sony Murata datasheet for the VTC6 lithium ion cell. At a 200 milliamp discharge, the total milliamp hour should be 3000. At a 3 amp discharge, that drops to 2850. At 10 amp discharge, that drops to 2750. And at a 15 amp discharge, that drops down quite a bit to 2400 milliamp hours. So you can see the, the higher your constant discharge rate, the less milliamp hours you're going to get out of the cell. For an example, say a drone averages 10 amps while flying around a test field at 50 kilometers per hour. If the same drone is used for a long range flight and there's a strong side wind, the amp draw may be more in the range of 15 amps instead of the 10 amps seen in testing. With a VTC6 6S1P battery, you would need to minus 350 milliamp hour from the expected total to, in order to be safe. Anything that causes the craft to draw more current from the battery will contribute towards lowering the total milliamp hour available. This is most noticeable with lithium ion batteries as their ability to handle high amp draw is much less than that of a LiPo. A few examples of things that will raise your current draw. Strong winds, flying more aggressively, significant altitude gain, and carrying more weight. Very cold temperatures will also cause most batteries to output a lower milliamp hour total. With my 5200 milliamp hour 6S 2P batteries, I average 4900 milliamp hour of usable capacity in ideal conditions about 20 degrees Celsius. Flying in the winter at minus 10, I expect to lose roughly 250 milliamp hour from the available total capacity due to the cold temperature. It's always wise to get to know your batteries. I suggest always flying several test flights in a safe location to get to know a new battery before heading out for some long range flights with it. Remember to enter the correct capacity into the power and battery tab of Betaflight for the estimated time remaining OSD element to work properly. If you want to see more information based long range FPV videos like this one, please let me know down in the comment section. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more long range FPV videos. If you're interested in bonus footage or showing your support for the channel, check out my Patreon page with the link in the description. Thanks for watching.